Hello and welcome to Money Life News and Views. I'm Devashish Basu. For the past few weeks, the media has been agog about a Himalayan yogi whose blessings alone were supposedly running the world's largest derivatives exchange, the National Stock Exchange of India. That is according to Chitra Ramakrishna, its former managing director. As documented in SEBI's 198-page order released on 11th February, Ms. Ramakrishna referred to this unknown person as the or Swamiji or your Lordship and she was communicating with her uh, through an email ID apparently. When SEBI asked her about the person behind the email ID, she said Siddha Purush or Yogi is a Paramahamsa who may be largely dwelling in the Himalayan ranges. I have met him on occasions in holy places. No locational coordinates are given. Thanks to these and other bizarre details, NSC became the laughing stock of the world. Forced to respond to this, the government has unleashed a Central Bureau of Investigation, leading to the arrest of Anand Subramaniam, as of now, a close buddy of Ms. Ramakrishna, whom she had appointed in violation of all rules and went on to give him jaw-dropping perks, promotions and increments, which also violated established processes. As the investigation proceeds, more arrests are likely linked to the co-location scam at NSE between 2010 and 2014, when a few brokers got unauthorized and preferential access to NSE's co-location servers, allowing them to skim off huge profits. NST is a high technology platform and has a near monopoly control over India's capital market. How has it become a hotbed of such scams and scandals? There is no paradox here. Behind its enormous commercial success and unheard of operating margin of 70%, NSE is a symbol of absolute power with the history of bending rules to suit its ambitions and quash competition as its founding team of Mr. Ravinarayan and Mr. Ramakrishna use its monopoly powers for regulatory capture. The Securities Exchange Board of India allowed NSC to expand into new businesses, ignoring, ignoring conflicts of interest, allowed them to make illegal appointments to top posts and work ruthlessly to destroy even a hint of competition. But a wacko MD communicating with the Yogi for guidance and running exchange, that was still a surprise. How did NSC, a first-line regulator, operating in a sensitive and highly regulated sector overseen by a high-profile board, SEBI and finance ministry, come to acquire such enormous powers and abuse them with impunity for so long? The answer, with the help of say, the same eminent people who were responsible for its oversight. Over the last 15 years or so, Ms. Narayan and Mr. Narayan and Mr. Ramakrishna have ensured that NSC's board members drawing among the highest sitting fees in India were carefully selected to ensure staunch and unquestioning support after having delegated far-reaching powers to the MD. Hence, when SEBI asked NSC about the ALGO scam, the board's first reaction was there were no irregularities. This was no surprise because the same board had irregularly appointed Mr. Ramakrishna as the MD in 2013. The board had constituted a selection committee of Ravi Narayan, S. H. Khan, who was former chairman of NSC and IDBI, S. Venkateswaran, former NSC director and senior advocate, and Deepak Satwalekar, who was the public interest director on 6 November 2012. The committee managed to hold its first meeting on the very day it was appointed, almost as if it was ready and on the spot and to get cracking. It met again just two days later. All these eminent busy people cleared their calendars to meet exactly two days later to strongly recommend that an internal candidate was best suited and recommend Mr. Ramakrishna's appointment with a five-year tenure. SEBI approval was required under the rules but was never sought. No other candidate was considered for the post even though the committee's mandate was to shortlist candidates from within the organization, from other exchanges in the country, other parts of the financial sector in the country, I mean, even exchanges globally. For the kind of money NSC was paying, it would have attracted the best of names from exchanges across the world. After all, after all the much smaller Bombay Stock Exchange, when under Madhu Kandan, had put together a crack team of professionals who had worked in New York Stock Exchange and Chicago Mercantile Exchange. While recommending Ms. Ramakrishna as the MD, the committee also created a brand new position with the designation of non-executive vice chairman for Mr. Ravinarayan, 
ignoring the fact that NEC could not possibly have both a chairman and vice chairman in non-executive posts. It was as if NEC was a personal fief of people from the founding team, these two people. And when one of them stepped down, that is Mr. Narayan, the next would automatically step in, which is Mr. Ramakrishna, while the former was accommodated in another capacity. The board saw nothing strange in Mr. Ramakrishna appointing Anand Subramaniam immediately after she became the MD without any discussion with the nominations and recruitment committee and bypassing all SEBI rules. The board remained silent when he was promoted to the group operating officer, again bypassing the NRC as well as stringent regulatory compliances and clearances. Extraordinarily, he was even kept out of the list of key management persons while enjoying the second highest remuneration and perks and being appointed on the boards of all NSC subsidiaries. He had absolutely no experience of capital markets or technology to run a complex exchange. And SEBI kept completely quiet in all this. The NSE ecosystem of influence is so strong that even after Mr. Ramakrishna left under a cloud, it fudged details of her exit and again did not bother to find someone within India or abroad with specific skill and qualification to run one of the largest exchanges in the world. Instead, it chose a successor who had no experience of running an exchange, a real-time trading technology platform or capital market regulations and gave him the same salary and perks as Ms. Ramakrishna. Don't forget, the NSE scam and its abuse of power happened under the gaze of three successive SEBI chairmen, the worst happening under C.P. Bhave and Yogesina. In short, the rot goes far deeper and is not limited to the some MD and some Yogi. The luminaries who have decorated NSE's successive boards over the past two decades, the top brass at SEBI, Key officials in the Ministry of Finance and a powerful politician have all actually actively helped. If the government is keen on a clean up, these eminent men must be made accountable and answerable. If you like the video, please do press on the like so that many others can share and watch and also subscribe to this channel so that you get alerted for future videos. Thanks for watching.